There he is, our uh, Premier Andrew Fury. Let's turn the camera on me. And here's little old me, Jennifer McCreeth. What am I doing awake so early? I don't know. But since I am awake this early, I figured I would watch the nine minute state of the provincial address. And uh, surprise, surprise. I actually liked a lot of what he said. I mean, he didn't. This read this nine minute speech reads like an executive summary. It doesn't have any specifics or anything like that, but I think the talking points are all there. He's right. We're managing the province based on old, out of date models and ideologies. And I can personally relate to what it's like to live in debt and to have to deal with interest on debt as your number one or number two household expense. It's tough to pay the bills when you got to pay interest on debt. It's tough to get out of debt when you have to pay interest on debt. Same time, we've had a rough year. COVID-19 has ruined a lot of businesses. It's cost a lot of people their jobs. Even some that are going to be going back to work have had a very rough couple of years. My debt has grown. I've, well, finding and keeping a high level of employment. I mean, as an individual citizen of Newfoundland. Again, I'm just speaking as Jennifer McCreeth here today. I'm not here to play politics, NDP, a liberal, whatever. This is just Jennifer McCreeth talking from the heart. <clears throat> I'm university educated and I'm college educated. I've got many years of work experience in the government and the private sector, in both junior and senior roles. I would love the opportunity to, to find a job that will allow me to maximize my potential, which will allow me to get myself out of debt which will allow me the income to help. Everyone says things like buy local. I'd love to. I can't afford to buy local. I go to Walmart and buy a loaf of bread for a dollar. I can go to the local bakery and buy for four dollars. I'm just scraping by. It's peanut butter sandwiches and hot dogs. It's not gourmet steaks. That's the way I've been living life for the past couple of years. In and out of unemployment, CERB, I've gone into the storage room and dug out my old box of hockey cards from when I was a little kid and I'm putting them up on eBay just so I can have a few extra bucks to pay some of these bills. But yeah, um, I'm with you. I mean, I don't, I haven't read the Maury Green report yet. I've gotten the bullet points but everything you talked about there uh, premier I mean you're right you, we got all these models based on 1970s we've got what were those two points you made you had one about yeah we used to have six kids for every senior now it's two seniors for every kid we've got all these We've got a lot of government buildings, perhaps too many, that we don't need anymore. We've got schools that are open with few students. I mean, and I mean the amalgamation piece. 20 years ago, I had a job with the Ontario government, and they were looking at integrating an amalgamation in government services. The word back then was we have too many silos and we need to break down the silos. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. We need to bring them together. Governments all over the, the world have been centralizing IT. Departments fought it. They didn't want to lose their own IT department. But once we realized you can create things like the office of the chief information officer, centralize your IT, that it's actually not only a good idea, it's... Bear with me a second there. It can add value. So, nobody wants to lose their jobs, whether it's a school board or a health authority or whatever. But you got to do this. You got to amalgamate. You got to merge. Government is generally top heavy. We've got way too many managers 
and directors and executive directors and very few junior analysts, etc. My parents' generation, you, you walked out of school and you walked into an organization and you got a job at the bottom and you worked your way up. What we've done is we've eliminated all those middle positions. I've seen it here in Newfoundland, Labrador. I saw it in Ontario. So there's nowhere to grow. You, you come out with a university degree and you're only able to get a job as a clerk. And there's no junior analyst position to move up to. And because of that, you're not going to become a senior analyst or a manager. So you, you leave, you go back to school, you find another place to live or another place to work. You get angry or you run. For, you keep putting your name on a ballot and hope so you can get a job that way. Yeah, this is only going to work if we seriously look at the overspending. We got to take a deep look at, at places like Nalcor, places like Nelchi. We also got to be careful. I mean, public-private partnerships, consulting. I was shocked when I first came here to Newfoundland in 2007 at the high amount of percentage government was spending on private contractors to come in and do work when that work could have been done here in-house. They say, oh, it's cheaper to hire a contractor than to create an employee. Not necessarily. Not if you're paying that contractor or the contractor's company six to eight times the amount of money that it would cost to have that employee. The contractor comes, they do the work, you pay the fee, they leave, the knowledge goes out the door. Whatever happened to knowledge management? Your people are not just here to do a job, they're an asset. If I work for you for several years, that's knowledge and experience. You want to retain that. You don't want it walking out the door and going back to the mainland, do you? You want to give people an incentive? You want the young people to stay instead of leave? I've been a young professional for 25 years to the point where I'm not young anymore. But I can't seem to find that ladder to climb. So I come in and out of different industries. I've moved around from province to province a bit. I've got a cat here. I'm glad you're not just going to ram the Moya Green report through. I'm glad there's, we're going to sit down. Let's have a legitimate sit down. We'll get everyone at the table. We'll get all the political parties. We'll get private businesses there. We'll get nonprofit people, individuals. We'll look at the Green Report and look at the impact. Risk versus reward. We know we have to do something. It's the matter is, well, what exactly is it are we going to do? But yeah. I still think this election, I'm going to go off topic a bit, I still think this election was unfair. And I really, really do hope. Because, I mean, nobody's going to have faith in you as a leader, Mr. Fury, if it's a tainted election and a tainted victory. I might be getting a job back in the justice system, so I'm going to be very careful about how I word this. But uh, as, a, as a private citizen, I would have much more confidence if these three challenges led to by-elections. Because I definitely have questions. Um, I'm not going to say I hope the judge does the right thing, because I don't know. I'm not a judge. All I know is that I don't have faith in our electoral process, and a lot of people I know don't either. And you got to fix that. You can't build a house if you don't have a strong foundation. So I don't know if electoral reform was in those 300 and whatever pages of the Green Report, but that is definitely something we need to look at. You need a clear, strong, decisive mandate through a fair and legitimate election process. If any of this is actually going to work, if you're going to want people to come and sit down and work with you. I like what I hear in this nine minute video. I'll give you that. Um, I'm not ready to jump off the NDP train and jump on a liberal train. 
give me a million give me a give me a million dollar a year contract maybe I don't know that seems to be an issue liberals being given jobs in high places because they're liberals not because they actually deserve the job or the job doesn't really need to exist are we still creating jobs that don't need to exist just so our friends can get rich those are the type of jobs that needs to be eliminated again I go back to these now and what's it called Nalcor and Nilchi Newfoundland Nilchi is Newfoundland Center for Health Information which is a great idea in theory but we also have a Department of Health Information Management uh, department so again duplication of services there again these quasi crown corporation government bodies whatever you want to call them that's where you get these managers and directors making ten times the amount of money that they would if they were just regular government departmental employees and I think that's something we need to look at well I've rambled on enough there's my thoughts folks and uh, yeah I don't know I mean, let's let's go read that report and come up with some ideas but yeah we got to fix this electoral process because without a without faith in the, in in the foundation there, there's no way people are going to want to help you build a, a faulty house let alone live in it and that's what we're up against here if I can't find that right ladder to climb here in Newfoundland Labrador I'll go find one somewhere else if that means moving back to Ontario or Nova Scotia I will heck Alberta why is it that so many Newfoundlanders have to work in Alberta why can't they work here at home let's find jobs let's create jobs gotta make this happen